Okay. All right. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the Teller Community Call. Uh, another lovely community chat with you guys. It is almost the end of March, and uh, yeah, and it's been a it's been a really quick March. I mean, we've all been really busy, uh, obviously, with the migrations, and we're we're almost done now. Um, a couple updates on the migra migrations while I'm talking about it is uh, we have. For those of you that are on Huobi, we now are moving towards migrating those addresses. So that's that's really good news for you guys. And um, and every day we, we're we're continuing to get a few people reach out to us and uh, and trickle in. Um, and we're going to continue to support those of you that are coming late to the migration game. Um, we've we've told everybody there's no time limit on this, and and, and we're going to sort of stand by that and. And we're going to have a, uh, a a system in place to to make sure that um, you know even even in the long term future, if anybody comes around and it needs to migrate, that they'll still be able to. So, um, please continue to reach out, and we'll help you uh, as best as we can. Um, other than that, I think uh, Crossy has an update, a, t a technical update for us. To, he's going to share with us uh, today in in a few moments. So we start um, with the good news. Yeah, yeah. The, well, do you want to do that now? Do you want to jump into to that, or it's it's up to you. Either way. Um, well, let's just, let me uh, let's do that after. Uh, I think the big news for us um, is we're going to be putting out some job postings. Obviously, uh, I think we're all excited about the, perform the uh, price performance of of TRB over the last uh, couple of days. Um, or a week or so now. So, um, you know, we're excited and we're going to take advantage of, of this, of this price action and, uh, and our increase in, in budget to expand the team, something that we've, we've had in our plans. We just got to right, wait for the, the right timing. And, um, we're going to be publishing some job postings on our website and we're going to be posting them on various, uh, you know, job channels that, uh, that we did last, last time that we were hiring. Um, and um, and on that note, we also have some some bittersweet news to share with you guys. Um, JG will be uh, leaving the team. Uh, he's you know he can share more about that himself, but um, he had another great opportunity come his way, and we he has our full backing and support, and we're really excited for him. And uh, you know we really appreciate uh, everything that. Um, you know, he's contributed to us uh, over the last six months. I think it's been about almost exactly six months, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yes. any, yeah. so well, Brenda, do you want to say anything about uh, you've worked more uh, with JG than I have? Well, if you guys didn't know, JG was actually our first hire outside yeah. of. Uh, it was super exciting when he came in. I mean, not just because he was our brand new employee and outside of us three, but because he was so like, all of his skill set was so great, such a great addition to the team. He made our lives so much easier. I know Nick would agree with that, even though he's not here today, he'll be here next week. Um, he was definitely an integral part of, you know, all of our so upgrades he, and creations. Huh? So Nick is so hurt that he, he couldn't be here today. Yes, yes, he's very heartbroken right now. Uh, but, you know, he helped us really streamline our updates and transitions for the new contracts. And also like, we had a lot of, um, I guess, very fast paced times. And I don't think, you know, I, I, even though Nick is an amazing programmer and, um, you know, none of that I think could have moved as fast if we, had, if we hadn't had JG in, in the team. So I'm just extremely excited that for him, for his new opportunity as well. Um, it's bittersweet to see him go, but you know, he, he contributed so much to the team that I'm, I'm just really grateful, not just in the solidity part, but also like he jumped into the minor and the hackathons and he was just like pretty much all over the place. And you know what, as a startup, I think that's one of the things that we really appreciate about everybody in the team, the flexibility and the willingness to just, you know, be there and, and that's one of the reasons, like, you know, even though it's bittersweet to see you leave, like, I'm so excited for you to actually grow and like, get so, you know, a better opportunity. And, you know, hopefully one day, you know, you'll circle back. 
Yeah, sure. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's also bittersweet for me. Like uh, I said many times, I'm leaving for because I think it will be a good opportunity career wise. But like the six months I spent here was like nothing but amazing. I've learned a lot. I've built a lot of cool stuff. And like the team is overall very good. Like and they incredible, easy to work with. And it's been pretty nice. I mean, the, uh, the last six months of learning and working and I really enjoy it. And like I said, I also don't want this to be like the last time working together. I bet I'll be working with Teller again in the future sometime. And I'm just excited to see when that and what we'll be building by now, by then, right? Yeah. And thank you all. Just appreciate it. Inspired my mustache game, I have to say. That yeah. <laughs> I will carry the torch forward. Yes. For as long yeah. as I can. Um, I'd like to see Tally with a mustache as well, but. <laughs> yeah, Tally, get on it. Uh, I'm trying my best. <laughs> one whisker at a time. Um, do you want to share anything about where you're going or? Um, sure, yeah, uh, I'll be joining uh, Reflexors Labs. It's the team that is building uh, a stable asset called Rye, which is supposed to be a stable coin, but not pegged to any other specific coin. So it's not pegged to USD, it's just less, way less volatile than ETH itself. Um, and basically, that's the goal. Yeah. It's a small team as well. The project, I think it's live already on mainnet, um, but it's still on its early days. And that's where I'll, I'll be, I'll be going. Cool. Well, we wish you the best. And of course, thank we're going to be bugging you on Telegram all the time. And sure. <laughs> I also want to thank you for um, all the help you have did with our, our hackathons. As everybody knows, we've been doing a lot of involvement in hackathons and you really uh, were integral in sort of, uh, um, you know, helping us with that and, and sort of leading the sort of onboarding and support for those people building on Teller and and um, you were like our main judge as well on those. So um, so we really appreciate that. I think everybody who's been building on us for the last few months really appreciates that as well. So, um, you know, we're going to we we're going to learn a lot. Uh, we learned a lot from you in terms of uh, that process and we're going to we're going to continue that going forward so we're going to look to we can't you, you can't be replaced but we, we have to we'll have to find somebody that uh hopefully can uh can hold a candle to to uh to how you uh how you were for us over the last six months so thank you we will uh i think we can move on from there uh and um you know feel free to come back of course anytime you know if you want to do a, a you know something about reflexor on our one of our community calls we you know as you know we like to bring guests on and so it'd be kind of a nice reunion in a in a few months cool if, um, if the pegging if the algorithm algorithmic pegging fails you can always uh, use oracle teller as a backup <laughs> for sure yes if you're planning here yeah. if you're trading uh -huh. Trojan the, horse here yeah <laughs> <laughs> diabolical um cool all right so so yeah we're going to be looking for uh another uh, another dev another back-end dev solidity dev um we'll be looking for an integrations engineer um as well as a, a community manager uh so the details of you know titles are are vague but uh we're going to post some details of what that means to us in our job postings and so just that should be going out tomorrow. Um, so if any of you guys in our community are, are interested, uh, you know, we sort of give priority to people that come from our community. That's what we what we want this to be. And so if any of you guys feel like you might be candidates for any of these things, uh, uh, keep on the lookout. requirement out. is to be able to do more than 50 push-ups. That's true. That's true. <laughs> we do have a, uh, we, I, don't, I don't know if we've, we've shared that. Maybe we need to do that live. Uh, one time, but we do a uh, we do a like a workout challenge where we all hop on Zoom like this and we do push push ups, planks, and wall sits, and uh, and we do it over the course of two months and we all try to improve and stuff like that. It's a lot of fun. Um, Maybe but anyway, we can do it with the community one day. Yeah, if we get <laughs> everybody, to community, it would be it would be hilarious. It can join the challenge. Yeah, Ben, our our front end guy, he's the DJ, so he plays. Uh, 
He's been playing uh, Belgian artists for us, uh, and it's been good. Um, but uh, anyway, I think we can move on. And uh, so, Crossy, would you like to share with us a, an update, a Telliot update? I'll give you... Sure, if you allow me to share my screen as well. You should be ready to go. Okay. Uh, hopefully, I share the right one. Okay. So you should be able to see it. Can you see my screen? Yep. yep. Okay. Well, so the biggest thing we have been working over the last one month is being able to use multiple uh, public and private keys. So basically you can run a single Telet instance and you can submit, um, if you have like five staked addresses, you can use all of them to submit values to the Oracle. And before it was, for me, it was a bit strange that we, you needed to set up one Telet instance for each private staked key you wanted to use. So now we have worked on this really hard to uh, make it work with multiple private and public keys. And you can see here from the graph that uh, the graph shows that, okay, this, this key submitted at what, um, 1540 and then another key submitted 1543 and you can see it's distributed over time. It's not limited only to like one submit every 15 minutes. And this allows you to use a single instance with a database and it basically just simplifies the whole setup. You don't have to run, if you have multiple staked miners, you don't have to run uh, multiple tailored instances. That's one thing. And then another thing is over the last, well, probably over the last, I don't know, few months, I realized that it doesn't make sense that everybody runs the same tailored because everybody's trying to play the game uh, in a different way, like to solve the challenge faster, uh, submit with high, um, lower gas price and different different strategies. So we, we, we worked, we work, we're still working really hard to make Telet really modular. So for example, if you want to use just one piece from Telet, you can take it, plug in your own logic, then, then just use your own strategy to be able to submit values. And this is, I think the, uh, going forward, this is the way we will continue the development. The default will be keep it stable, but still make it uh, modular enough so that can people just take pieces and add their logic and and this way we, it's still decentralized. Everybody will be using their own version, but for the uh, main logic, like for example, how you get the uh, the the new challenge, you don't have to uh, implement your own logic. You can reuse it from Telet. For now, you will be limited to using Golang, but in the future, I see where we can um, allow using different languages to interact with Telet. And I think this is like very, very good improvements. And obviously we're looking for feedback. People, we want people to start using it because uh, at the moment, if you can, you, if everybody's using it the same way, it just, it doesn't make sense. Everybody's it has wants to implement different logics and, and this is what we're trying to do. And I think this is more or less the big update. It's it's not in the release yet because we are clearing out a few bugs, but it's it's ready for you to start testing it if you just use the master branch and it's ready to go. For Thank those, you, Grassi. I'm those sorry. For watching who aren't miners, um, what is the takeaway from that? Is this this will help miners uh, add more stake, therefore more security in a you know in an easier way because they don't have to set up I another think, instance. I and think it will it will give a, a a lower barrier for entry if you can reuse a lot of the logic from here and there. You don't have to re-implement it yourself, and you still have a good edge. For example, if you if you have like a very good hash power, you can reuse the logic for how you get the values, how you aggregate the values, and then be really quick on solving the challenge. And you don't have to think about the actual values on the USD dollar. You can just use the same logic and add it and make sure that it all works as expected. And this just makes it really efficient because they only have to run one database instead of like five different ones for, or however many different ones for each stake, they just want, they're just running runs. So it just makes it way more efficient and cleaner for them. It optimizes it. 
-hmm. Also, the tool that Crossy showed for monitoring, that's available for the miners as well, right, Crossy? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly from the, you just run it and you attach it to the dashboard and it will give you, start giving you metrics. On the next release, I will add something even more exciting, which will show you a graph of how much you're actually earning and actual earnings and how much a transaction cost. So you can see, okay, I'm not making enough money. I need to change the strategy or, okay, I'm making enough money. I don't have to change anything. And, and it will give you a very good insight without even looking at the logs, just looking at the dashboard, you will know whether you need to change something or it works very well. Yeah, and the miner has come a long way. I mean, and one of the reasons I think is because Crossy implemented a monitoring system. So he can go from like what we had to actually optimizing and continue to optimize. So if you guys yeah. uh, do that for your miner, um, please make use of all these tools, these really cool tools. And for non-miners, what, what does it mean? I mean, I guess more decentralization. That means more people can join and mine, which makes the game more distributed. And yep, absolutely. I don't know, maybe somebody else can join other benefits, but this is probably the main one I can think of. And that's a good one. Um, cool. All right, well, I think it's time to jump into some questions. If anybody has any in the chat, go ahead and, and shoot them over. But we have, uh, we have a couple that were submitted to the document here. Uh, I will begin with a chain link one. Could you please elaborate on what the core fundamental changes are compared to Chainlink? I heard in an interview with the CEO of TRB that he seems to think that this project is better, but other than that, I am waiting for results. <laughs> well, I sure hope the CEO thinks this project is better. Yes, and yeah. I, I hope our CEO is actually a she, otherwise uh, I've been confused this whole time. Um, Still very bullish on the project and hope to see a bit more of the roadmap to go. So, well, thank you for being bullish on that. Um, I think the really, the basics without having to go into a crazy amount of detail, and it's actually really hard to go into a lot of detail about Chainlink because uh, um, it's a confusing project. Uh, and I think that's a downside and I think we could start there as a difference is that we really wanted to make uh, our Oracle simple um, and easy to understand and our documentation easy to understand and our white paper easy to read and easy to understand. And, and we think that that has been uh, a great benefit to us, even on a technical level, Brenda, I'm sure you can elaborate, like it's probably easier from a des technical design standpoint to start with something simple and, and, and sort of slowly expand versus try to solve all the problems in one go, right? Right. I mean, one of the big differences is that we are one, what we have in our in our actual white paper is basically what we have in production right now. Um, I know that Chainlink has a lot of stuff in their white paper and it's still a work in progress. Um, but um, in the technical terms, the biggest difference that we have is that for them to be able to stand, for anybody to be able to stand up a node in Chainlink, they have to get whitelisted. And there's really no clear way to dispute or to report a bad value um, to check to the, to the node, not that I know of. Um, and for Telliot or Teller, we actually, it's open, it's an open system. Anybody can come and stake and start mining and providing data. And it's very easy for our users or anybody to actually dispute the validity of any value that it's submitted, um, especially if it's bad. And there's just economic incentives that make this work on their own mm -hmm. already. Um, other than that, uh, we try to really focus a lot of our announcements on, in terms of partnerships and working with somebody uh, once we actually have a, a working product or when we're, you know, we. We've been sort of brainstorming about whether or not we should start talking about projects beforehand when we actually start talking to them and start those conversations of whether or not we're a good fit and then whether or not, you know, we're, we start going into actual implementation. But as of now, like one of the biggest difference that we had done or we had purposely done that was different was that we wanted to only announce partnerships once we were fully integrated and fully, um, being utilized and you know versus just you know doing an announcement 
the moment that we made a phone call. So that's another different, at least in my view, another thing that we've done differently. Mm -hmm. um, and for that, you know, like I said, we've been brainstorming whether or not we want to change that moving forward. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much- One other thing is how many, how many da data uh, IDs does Chainlink provide? This is probably, how many data feeds do they have? Do you know? N not at the top of my head, but like less than, definitely less than we do. Um, yeah, and this is one other thing I was going to say, like, for example, when we have a project coming around, can we add this to Teller? And the answer is always, almost always, as, as soon as, as long as we can get the data from somewhere aggregated, the answer is always yes, yes. If there are users for it, yep. which I think this the actual um, way to add more data points, it's it's different. Yeah, definitely. Because the way the way our model works, like our data providers don't care which data they're fetching. Like, it doesn't have to be a more popular coin or a more popular data feed. Like, it, it doesn't really matter. Is uh, uh, for them the rewards are the same and uh, of course there's the the whole tipping dynamic when there's uh, a lot of demand for prices and th and that will have a, a role to play in this but um you know we're pretty agnostic our, our, our data providers are definitely our miners are agnostic uh, on the data types and so we have we've had a number of projects come to us because of that flexibility because we can within within reason with with within our capabilities we can pretty much add most data types, as long as, like you said, Crossy, there's there's APIs for it. Um, another thing, Brenda, you touched on this uh, this this sort of staking uh, aspect of, of our security, and um, with Chainlink, it's not clear if there is actually any penalty for being a bad data provider. Um, we haven't gotten a straight answer uh, publicly from them about this at all, and so. Um, I don't really think there is. And I think that that's what the, the sort of central whitelisting agency's role is, is to make sure everybody plays by the rules because then you could get whitelisted. And this sounds really centralized because it is. And so, um, you know, that's a pretty big difference. Yeah, but as the CEO, I want to say that I do think Teller is better. <laughs> nice. Okay, yeah. you've heard it, you've heard it here. Brenda thinks Teller is better. Um, but thank you for your question. I, I, that was probably as long as we've elaborated on Chainlink in a while. Um, we repeat it every like two or three meetings. It gets boring and we don't mean to like, if someone asks next week, we might spend 20 seconds on it. Uh, we, you know, we apologize. We just get asked all the time and, and, you know, uh, people in our chat are, are you know, our community is pretty well educated at this point. And so, uh, they, they got our backs usually in the chat when people ask that question. But moving on, um, this one says, why don't you collect use cases? It would be great to know which projects are implementing Teller. Um, you're probably meaning uh, gaining users. Um, so uh, yes, we are working on that. Uh, I think we've, we've shared that Liquidity is a new uh, user of ours that is launching tomorrow. Um, that we haven't done any public marketing about that yet uh, because we're we are coordinating with them and we have a time frame for that um, and so that will come in in in, in due time um, but uh, I mean this is public information it's it's in there it's in their code it's in their documentation and so we we wish them a, a great launch if you haven't heard of liquidity um, give them a look participate in their launch uh, we like them as a project. We think it's going to be, we think, we think and hope it's going to be great. So th that is one that um, we can share about. There are a number of other projects that are currently implementing us. We're just waiting uh, for it to go through. Um, we don't, like Brenda was saying, to a fault, we, we want to wait until there's actually code live. Because um, what happens, there's a lot of these projects come to us and they want to, they sort of play a game where they talk like they want to use Teller, but really it's more about pushing out marketing materials so for their benefit. And ultimately, maybe they don't have any intentions of really launching or using the Oracle. And it's hard to tell until they do actual work. So they got to sort of prove that they're legit to us before we're going to 
let them piggyback on our marketing efforts. Like it's just not something that is fair to our community to do that. Even though I know you guys are starving for a tweet that says that someone's using us, but if, if they end up becoming a, you know, a fake project or they're not actually using Teller, then we lose integrity. So the price has doubled. So I assume probably there are people projects using us and we don't know about. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. And that's what we prefer. We, you know, and also keep now keep in mind that like once the data is on chain, um, our data is public. So anybody can read it. And yes, they can take advantage of getting free data. But you know, it, if, if the data is not there, they'll eventually have to tip. But it's very easy for projects to actually implement us without really telling us because, you know, Bitcoin, the Bitcoin price, the ETH price is always pretty much being fed and it's just there for yeah. anybody to use. Maybe we can make it as a hackathon, find projects that are using Teller without telling us. Right. And that has a nice, there's something in that. There's a nice slogan there or a nice ring to it. But yeah, I mean, I, ideally we want to make it so, uh, to, you know, Teller is this Oracle that, um, is easy to implement, easy to use, easy, easy to integrate with us. And it doesn't really require this, so much of this B2B or, um, you know, developer handholding. Um, you know, we're not obviously at that point yet. And so there, we do a great job actually interfacing with these projects and helping them along. And we're proud of that. But like the ideal we want to shoot for is, is that, um, it's, it's so easy that they don't, it doesn't really require us, especially when we can become more decentralized. Um, it'll be less to maintain. Um, but thank you for your question and stay tuned. I, we think it's going to be an exciting, uh, Q2 for Teller. Um, next question is I sent TRB to Bitthumb exchange after migrating my tokens, but their address did not support these and now are lost. And then you sent me your email. It's a hit mail. Where's the, where's the question? I don't know. Um, I don't think, I think it's just a, a statement. Um, I'm so please just, uh, we'll follow up with you and figure out exactly what, what happened. Um, if you can message one of us on telegram, but you gave me your email address, so we'll reach out and try to try to help you out if we can. When will Frodo reach Mordor? Fellowship update ETA. It's a it's a good one. Uh, we're on it. Yeah, uh, we're on it. We're still working on. We're. I think we're mostly done with the design, and we're currently on the testing phase of it. Um, I have literally spent eight hours looking at the code today. So it's like, yeah, like Brent, what Brenda uh, said, it's, we're just literally looking for bugs, trying, writing more tests, probably some documentation after that, like some final touches. So Frodo in, in, uh, who's, who is it? I think Scott? my, Frodo and Sam are climbing Mount Doom right now. Right. Hopefully they get, I, I hope they get there sometime in April. Um, that's, that's, that's it. That's as much as I can say. Don't hold me to it. But sometime in April, I, I'm hoping that they'll get there. The weather in Mordor is great in April. Yes. Perfect. You need this, you need the rain because it's all <laughs> too much lava in Mordor. But yeah, our goal, is, our goal is Depends April. Depends on the weather. Yeah. We have, um, we have some users that we're coordinating with and that during the month of April um, around the fellowship. So um, it's a little bit of a, we're waiting on them and they're waiting on us kind of thing. So, but uh, it's definitely a priority. So we're excited to, to move that forward and we'll keep you updated. So that's it for the questions. Is there any, any extra ones in the chat? So Spuddy says that Bitthumb was allowing deposits, but they haven't migrated yet. So, okay. your, so what that might mean is that your tokens might be there, but they don't show up because they don't, they don't support the new token yet. So, um, 
anyway, I'll try to reach out to you and, and, and figure that out. And, and, and if we have to talk to the exchange, then we can, we can, I know that BitThumb was just messaging me or someone from BitThumb was messaging me recently about a listing and that uh, it's probably a fake uh, message, but um, okay. Well, I think that's it. Um, anything else guys? Nothing. Um, thank you everybody for being here. JG, thank you for being part of the team and can't wait to work with you again, even though you're still not gone. We still have you for a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. uh, you're still up for the, the challenge on Friday. So, right. Okay. <laughs> Great. The workout challenge that is. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, this is the exit, the exit interview. Yes. The outro. Yep. All righty. Um, that's it. Till next time, guys. Bye. -bye.